What's up guys? Welcome to another video of the course Dynamic Programming for Beginners. This is part 11 and today I would like to talk about the difference between top-down and bottom-up approach when it comes to solving dynamic programming problems. As I mentioned before, the goal of this course is to explain the topic as simple as possible in the fashion of explain like I'm five. So, in order to explain both top-down and bottom-up approaches, I would like to step away from the computer science for a moment and answer the general questions first. What is top-down? What is bottom-up? What are these terms at all? So, top-down and bottom-up are both strategies of information processing. These strategies are used in a variety of fields, such as management, psychology, manufacturing, as well as in computer science. For a second, let's dive into the world of psychology, specifically the world of perception. What is perception? Perception is basically a process of organization and interpreting sensory information. There are two basic approaches to understanding how the perception takes place. One of this is known as bottom-up processing and the other is known as top-down processing. In psychology, bottom-up processing refers to processing information as it's coming in, sort of like in real time. Top-down processing is when we form our perceptions starting with a larger idea before working our way toward more detailed information. In other words, top-down processing happens when we work from the big picture to the tiny details. Let's take a look at the difference between top-down and bottom-up processing. If I were to draw an obscure shape something like this, and ask you a question, what is this? By using bottom-up processing, you would probably tell me that this is letter B. But then, if I were to add some context to it, this is no longer letter B, but, but 13, right? Number 13. Why? Because you have some context and you're solving essentially sub-problems, and this is a top-down approach, top-down processing. You're solving sub-problem, this sub-problem, and that sub-problem, and then you can answer the general question that this, is, uh, that this is 13 and not letter B. If I were to add even more context to it, again, you're using top-down processing. You're looking at A, you're looking at C, and the result, you can tell me that this is uh, a letter B, right? So this is the difference between top-down and bottom-up processing. The other example would be if I were to give you a random text, a sheet of text, right? And I would ask you to tell me what this text is about. There are two ways how you could read the text, right? One way is to read it from the top to bottom, like all of us read regular text. This is one approach. And the other approach is to start reading somewhere in the middle, then at the end, and then at the beginning. This would be a bottom-up processing. It's basically the other way to read a text. So this is the difference, again. This is what top-down and bottom-up processing when it comes to perception. Now let's get back to computer science. In the software development process, the top-down and bottom-up approaches play a key role. Top-down approach is based on planning and a complete understanding of the system. This strategy is implemented by attaching the stops in place of the module. And then all the individual subcomponents are being implemented later. Top-down approach is more suitable when the software solution needs to be designed from scratch and very specific details are unknown. Bottom-up approach works in the exact opposite way. You start by taking small components and assembling them into a desired system. So bottom-up strategy is more suitable when a system needs to be created from some existing components. Now, what about dynamic programming? When it comes to solving combinatorial and optimization problems, we can use either top-down or bottom-up approach. Let's talk about the top-down dynamic programming first. We are going to review the popular Fibonacci function. When it comes to Fibonacci, we can, one way to solve it is to use recursion. And when it comes to recursion, there is a recurrence relation, right? So for Fibonacci, it's f of n equals f of 
n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. Very simple and very popular. So let's take a look at the, recur the recursion tree uh, when we solve Fibonacci of 4. So to solve Fibonacci of 4, we would need to find Fibonacci of 3 and Fibonacci of 2. To find Fibonacci of 3, we would need to find Fibonacci of 2 and Fibonacci of 1. To find Fibonacci of 2, we would need to find Fibonacci of 1 and Fibonacci of 0. To find Fibonacci of 2 here, we would need to find Fibonacci of 1 and Fibonacci of 0. So this is how a regular recursion tree for the Fibonacci of 4 looks like, right? What's the problem with this? The problem is that the runtime uh, complexity is exponential. So big O of 2 to the power of n. And there is a way to optimize it. How? We can use, one way to optimize it is to use top-down dynamic programming. What does it mean? Well, it means that we want to save some, some uh, we want to avoid calling some functions. So in this recursion tree, for instance, we call f of 2 twice. And then f of 1 is also called twice, right? So if we store the values of this function calls to a hash table or maybe an array, then we could reuse those values later. This is called memoization. Memoization. And we've talked about that at some point. So memoization plus recursion, that's what top-down dynamic programming is. So if we apply memoization here, then we would not have to go this whole route. So this subtree essentially disappears. And then this f of 1 call disappears as well. And now, as you can see, the uh, runtime complexity becomes O of n. And that's, that's pretty good, right? Now, what's about uh, bottom-up dynamic programming? So, they say that bottom-up dynamic programming is the real dynamic programming, and then the top-down uh, DP is just a recursion plus memoization, recursion plus caching. So, with top-down dynamic programming, we say, okay, so I want to find f of 4. In order to find f of 4, I need to find f of 3. To find f of 3, I need to find f of 2. To find f of 2, I need to find f of 1. With bottom-up dynamic programming, it's the opposite, right? So we say, okay, so I need to find uh, f of 4. And we could even change the problem statement a little bit. Instead of finding f of 4 specifically, we could say, well, let's find all the Fibonacci numbers uh, for all the numbers up to 4. So we already know what f of 1 is. It's a base case, right? So we could say, well, knowing f of 1, I could find f of, f of 2. And knowing f of 2, I could find f of 3. Knowing f of 3, we can find f of 4. So this is... Um, bottom-up dynamic programming. When, when, it, when we solve problems with bottom-up, we essentially solve all the sub-problems. When it comes to top-down, we only solve the ones that we need specifically. So this is a slight, this is a minor uh, difference between the two. Bottom-up dynamic programming is also called tabulation. Sometimes you can hear this um, term as well. And the reason why it's called tabulation is because we use a table, and when I say a table, I simply mean an array, in order to store the results of subproblems. So for this specific problem, we would create an array of size n, or maybe n plus 1, and f of 1, we know that, um, that f of 1 is 1, f of 2 is also 1, uh, or we could start from 0, right? So f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1, f of 2 is um, 1 as well. So we essentially store the results in um, in an array, regular array, right? Then f of 3 is the sum of the previous two, so it's 2. This guy, f of 4, is essentially uh, 3, right? So that's how the bottom-up DP works. 
we store the results to solve problems in this, in this uh, table, in this array. And then the major difference is that when we use bottom-up approach, we always use iteration. It's always about iterating over um, this, uh, this array. So it means that we are not, um, there is no way that we will ever get a stack overflow because with top-down dynamic programming, if the recursion tree is too deep, it's possible that we can get the stack overflow um, error. Okay, so what else? So the other thing about bottom-up approach is, is the fact that, the other thing is that there are two ways to calculate subproblems. So one way is called forward dynamic programming. It means that we know several values, several results uh, to, in this case, three subproblems. And by using these values, we can calculate the result of the other, the next sort of like subproblem, right? So this one is unknown. This one is unknown. And this is a forward uh, DP. And there's also backward DP. When it comes to backward, it means that we know the result of only one subproblem, and then we can contribute to other subproblems and find the result of those. So this three are unknown. And I'm going to show both of these uh, ideas in code. And let's actually take a look at code. Let's finish the whiteboarding session. And I think by looking at actual code will help us to sort of like better understand and better digest the ideas about top-down and bottom-up dynamic programming. All right, so I've got my editor. I've created empty functions here that we're going to implement. And the first one is a regular recursion. So if n equals to zero, we simply return zero. These are base cases, right? And then if it's less than or equals to two, we return one. Otherwise, we just call ourselves with n minus one plus Fibonacci of n minus two. So this approach is not optimal, right? It's uh, exponential runtime complexity, which is too slow, and we want to optimize it. We can use top-down dynamic programming by adding memoization. So this one is just recursion, and that one is recursion plus memoization. So let's create our hash table that we'll use to store the results of subproblems. And then I'm going to create a helper function which will accept n and the hash table. Now let's define it. It's a helper and then memo is a hash table and then we return integer. Now I'm going to handle base cases first and then if the subproblem has already been calculated, then we simply want to return its value, right? We don't want to recalculate it. So we can say if memo of n has already been calculated, then, then simply return its value. Otherwise, calculate it and store it. So otherwise, memo of n equals fib of fib top down helper n minus one memo plus fib top down helper n minus two memo. And then finally we can return the result. So this is top down dynamic programming, recursion plus memoization. Now let's do bottom up dynamic programming. So let's solve the base cases first. And then after that, we can create a table which we'll use for solutions to our subproblems and it's going to be of size n plus one then we can specify base cases dp of zero equals to zero dp of one equals to one and then we can solve subproblems starting from the second subproblem all the way up to the last subproblem and we can apply the transition function dp of i equals dp of i minus one plus dp of i minus two we've done that many times right and then the result is in dp of n. And as you can see, this is a forward dynamic programming. So by knowing f of i minus one and i minus two, we can find 
i uh, dp of i over here right now let's take a look at bottom up dynamic programming it's the opposite of forward dynamic programming so we will do the same first we'll specify base cases then i'm going to copy this part and instead of n plus one we'll do n plus two and the reason why is because we will contribute to two sub problems so let me show it to you while a i less than n i plus plus so dp of i is already calculated here right so dp of one is already calculated and by knowing that by knowing this value we can calculate i plus one and i plus two right so we can say i plus one we contribute to it the solution of dp of i and then dp of i plus two can be solved like so right so here dp of i is already solved and we can use it to solve other sub problems so as you can see dp of i is known it's already known and then we use it to find i plus 2 and i plus 1 um, and then finally at the end we can return dp of n same thing now let's run the tests and see if things work correctly okay so it looks like everything is good we don't have any errors and the last thing that i wanted to mention here is that um, as you can see the code for um, actually two things so the first thing is that the code for bottom-up approach is way easier to read um, you don't have recursion here so it's easier to reason about runtime and space complexities and then the second thing is that every time you solve a dynamic programming problem try to use the top-down approach first because it's natural to human beings to think in the top-down way so use the top-down dp to find the recurrence relation or the transition function and then once you have the have it uh, use it um, try to see the try to look at the problem from the bottom up perspective and come up with um, a bottom up solution that's pretty much it for today i hope to post another video this coming sunday in which we'll talk about the coin change problem Thank you guys and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Bye.